Yeah. All right, folks, we're ready to start. Yeah. And we're going to try without a microphone. I'm a little loud, so you should hear me. And um, if you can't ask them to speak up. Before we start, this is also televised on Zoom. So this little device here will, there's a camera in there and a microphone. So if we get to a point where public participation and Freddie is going to speak, that camera will zoom right onto Freddie or anybody else, you know, and same thing up here at the board. So if a board member speaks, the camera should zoom, should go <laughs> onto the board member, pick up your voice and it'll broadcast it on the Zoom because there are a handful of people on the Zoom. So don't be afraid, it doesn't bite. So, uh, so we want to open up the monthly Arlington Housing Authority regular board meeting. It's Wednesday, September 21st, uh, 7.04. Uh, a roll call, uh, Gar? Yep. Nick, here. Joanne, Fiorella, everybody's here. Uh, we're going to move right into, uh, uh, and just for the audience. So as I told you at the last tenant meeting, for the next four months, the board is taking the board meetings and doing it at the different facilities. So uh, this is truly your time. Um, and I'm going to open the floor uh, to you folks, if you'd like to speak under the public participation guidelines because it's your facility, as we said, it's your community. And, um, but there's an awful lot of um, votes that we have to take first, the material, we're gonna go quickly. Uh, we'll, Jack usually gives his report, and then as we do these votes on the different budgetary things, Jack might explain about it. So it might be a little bit over your head. Um, if you have a question, you know, just for this meeting, I'll allow you to raise your hand. If you have a question about what we're talking about, Raise your hand and we'll um, we'll spend a little time answering the questions. And because uh, normally we just go right through this stuff. All right, anybody have any questions? Okay. So um, first order of business is the executive director's report. Jack. All right, thank you. So I'll start with uh, some of the capital project updates here at Drake Village. The fire alarm upgrade project for the Hauser building is currently out to bid and we hope to be able to present uh, that um, the recommended bid at the next board meeting in October. The, the electrical panel upgrade at the Drake Cottages in the Hauser building is in the design phase. The electrical panel upgrade project at the Cottages is also in the design phase. The roof project at the Hauser building and the door project at the Cottages should be going out to bid soon. At Chestnut Manor, uh, the electrical panel upgrade is in the design phase. We should have a better idea of the start dates for the window and air source heat pump projects at Chestnut and Winslow, um, and the air source heat pump at Chestnut and Winslow, windows only at Chestnut, uh, after the board, board meeting tonight and the board votes on those items. The second and third floor units at Chestnut um, that were taken offline due to the fire in January are just about ready, um, and we should be able, to be able to start leasing up those units effective November 1st. Uh, the first floor unit should be ready soon after as well. At Winslow Towers, we have found um, a pathway forward with the contractor to complete the building envelope work that was still pending from the window um, replacement project from last summer. At Minority Manor, we are encouraged that the window replacement project is on schedule. Uh, DHCD will be providing guidance on next steps. The draft of the, uh, of the feasibility study at Minority Manor, Manor has been completed and it shows a pathway for the Housing Authority to complete the deep energy retrofit at Minority Manor. Uh, which not only includes the window project, but a building wrap and some other components that will lead to carbon neutral um, and passive house and um, potentially passive house certification. We also met with Action Inc. Um, this past month as part of our lien application. They will be completing some weatherization work at Monotomy Manor, Cusack Terrace, and the Drake Cottages, in addition to some other work that should help create water savings at our, at our buildings with gas heated water. We will have a better idea of when that work will begin after the board vote tonight. Um, some, new, some news related to the uh, Housing Choice Voucher Program, effective October 1st. We will have five new Housing Choice Vouchers. These vouchers were made possible through President Biden's Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2022. Uh, this couple, coupled with the, with the over 10% increase in fair market rent will be great for our Section 8 program. In regards to the Chapter 689-2 development, uh, we are still looking into potential options for this development. Uh, we met with the town this past month related to 
um, a potential property and we're continuing to have discussions there as well as looking at other locations as well. We received a notification from the town of Arlington this past week that they'll be holding uh, booster, COVID-19 booster vaccination clinics and flu clinics at all of our senior public housing sites. Those, um, those notices related to the dates and times for those will be going out to all residents by the end of the week. An email will also be going out to the residents related to that. Uh, but, but keep an eye out, they're gonna be the first and second week of October. And if, I'm, if I remember correctly, I believe Drake is the first week of October. Uh, test kits are also available for residents and staff. We will make efforts to provide them to residents as we move into the fall. And for the residents here today, if you need test kits, please contact your property manager or Trisha Horgan, the resident services coordinator, should be able to get those to you. Uh, National night out and the cookouts at the senior developments went very well. Uh, residents were pleased to see the return of these events. It was a great opportunity to meet new staff and new residents. Uh, special thanks to Roly Demers, Lynn Sullivan, and Tricia Horgan for the hard work they put into making these events possible. For a resident services coordinator update, Lynn Sullivan, Mardia Pierre, and Tricia Horgan did a great job coordinating with community partners to get some back to school supplies and computers for students at Monotomy Manor. And some staff updates. Um, we have some new staff members to introduce to the, to the Board of Commissioners. Annette Thomas is the new property manager for Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace, and Winslow Towers. Samuel McCour is the certification specialist and will support the state public housing and Section 8 programs. Mardia Pierre is the new resident services coordinator. The position is being funded through Town of Arlington ARPA funding. We're in the process of completing the interview and screening process for the FSS position and should be ready to hire the new coordinator soon. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Jack? Okay, let's um, fill this in. All right, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> Approval of the Family Self-Sufficiency Action Plan that was in your packet. Uh, any questions on that? Is there anything different about it than the last one? Last one? There, there were some updates. Um, we ended up hiring a consultant who's better versed in this stuff than I am to help us meet some of the new federal guidelines that are ne necessary for the update to our FSS action plan. Um, and she was able to, to do that. So we'll be able to ensure that we meet uh, the requirements um, for, for the FSS program so we can move forward. And, and uh, how many people do we have participate in about, approximately? Approximately 25. That's a lot. Yeah. And we're hoping to grow it. Yeah. And some of the yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great money. it's a great program. Um, I know a lot of the board members have. I I mean, I'm still learning about it, uh, but it's a five year program. Provides participants in the Section Eight program uh, the ability to build escrow that can help them move forward to to get training or um, in other in other abilities to 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 deal with the, the cliff effect as they get off the program. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Where does the money come from? Is it a part of the rent? That so, so, the government? so my under, so my understanding is so when the person joins the program, their subsidy is X, and you know, their rent is X is Y. Um, as their income increases because they get new jobs um, with higher paying with that are higher paying or etc. That difference. Their rent freezes, so the difference that they should have been paying gets put into escrow. So it's a it's an incentive to continue to grow and um, and get get you know continue to grow professionally. What, what are some of the amounts? So a good example is um, recently we had a person graduate the program uh, with fifty thousand dollars over fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, unbelievable program, uh, life changing. Um, yeah. Very good. Any other questions? We need a motion. Motion to accept the um, updated action plan. So move. Second. Uh, who's taking minutes? Sandy on? Trisha is. Oh, Trisha is. Thanks, Trish. So, yeah, so move by Nick, second, my God. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Uh, Gar Nick? 
Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. That's a unanimous vote. We move on to the uh, number five, approval of the housing choice voucher payment standards. It's in your packet, Jack. Also included the current one that was effective May 1st. You'll see the second one effective October 1st. And as you'll notice, there's obviously it's a pretty interesting increase uh, in rents. Yeah, these are the section eight. These are the section eight uh, rents. Yeah, so now a one bedroom, uh, not necessarily in Arlington, uh, remember section eight can go anywhere. A one bedroom is now gonna be reimbursed at uh, $2,198, two bedroom, $2,635, and, and it goes up. Um, so that's a pretty significant increase. Um, anything you want to talk about, Jack, on that one? Yeah, this is this is um, this is going to be very helpful for our Section Eight program and the participants. We have a number of participants who have recently had difficulty um, finding homes and 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 raising these fair market rent standards will allow them to hopefully be able to find a home, not only in this area but ideally in Arlington. And that vouchers get increased too. Yeah, they did the money, the amount of money, no, and, the number of vouchers, and the yeah. number of vouchers too. Yeah, yeah. So we we yeah we're at we were at four hundred twenty two, and now we're at four hundred twenty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those folks live all over; they don't just live here. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you just manage the program. Yeah. We manage, we manage the program. The right. About forty percent live in Arlington. I was wondering. Yeah. That's a big, that's yeah. A big number. Yep. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. It's really in that way. Okay. Yep. People live in Arlington who got their vouchers. And I don't know you people could speak up on the yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. What about that? I can't yep. hear you. With the house that we're talking to each other and not to. Um, the housing choice program, I was just talking about some of the advantages. One is that it's attached to the person. So if you get a job in Springfield or whatever, you can just take your voucher and go get affordable housing there. Or if you have another child and you need a bigger apartment, you can just take your voucher and find it. Now, one statistic yeah. I heard last night was that around 40% of the people who get their vouchers to Arlington live in Arlington. But we have people in Arlington who got their doctors in Haiti or Memphis or Florida. <laughs> um, so that doesn't, the 40% doesn't really tell you how many people live in Arlington. It's crazy rent. So this new, uh, these new rates will be effective October 1st. So, so we, need, we need a motion uh, to adopt this as of October 1st. I move to approve the Section 8 uh, Housing Choice Voucher 2023 Payment Standards effective October 1st. I, I second So we have moved by Gar, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Piorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Thank you. Move on to number six. This is approval of the, the MOU for the SHINE program that's in your packet. Um, so, uh, so our big push um, to, to move into this agreement with the SHINE program through Minuteman Senior Services is as uh, many of the residents here in this room know, there were a number of waivers from Medicare and from um, Mass Health related to recertifications, allowing them the ability to access our sites and giving them space to meet with residents and recertify will help ensure uh, that the residents of, um, of, of housing authority are able to recertify in a timely manner, um, given that the waivers have expired. So the, uh, I don't know if you've read it yet. Um, there's a couple of things that I brought to Jack's attention that, you know, I'm okay with approving this tonight and have Jack work out the details. The first is the indemnification clause. You know, th this document is making housing <clears throat> indemnify Miniman, but there's no Miniman indemnifying housing. So, so it needs to be a mutual indemnification clause and he can fix that on the document. Um, mm -hmm. Second is that um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, ensure that a council is available 
an agreed upon location for a minimum number of hours per week. That kind of shifts the burden onto us, really. I mean, this is a program that Minuteman's doing. So if you take it for its face value, uh, we shouldn't be belabored with ensuring that somebody's there. So he needs to tweak that a little bit. Uh, two paragraphs of Bob, but he's got to work on that one too. Uh, and the and number two is to, to maintain two volunteers. Uh, you know, again, it's shifting the burden on us. So this this just needs to be tweaked a little bit so it's mutually acceptable. You know what I mean? Right. Other than that, I'm okay with with approving it, the draft with with future corrections by Jack. It's no money attached to it. Doesn't cost us anything. We do give them an office here. They're already here. Uh, they're here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll go to our uh, other sites too. Yeah. So it's a pretty good program. Yeah. Pretty good program. So, any questions on that? Yeah. Is there anything more that we're, we're asked to do? That obviously he went over. Is that right? You know? So initially, they were asking us for access to a computer, a phone, some other different types of devices to them. Um, after working with them, you know, I've, I've taken that down. Indicated that essentially, if they need access to that, I can provide to that, that to them at the main office. But as far as providing that to them at at satellite sites, yeah. um, that's not. I won't be, we I won't be doing that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Question? Yeah, I could think it might be useful if you if are already here, but some people might not know about it. Can you explain what they do? The volunteers. The volunteers. So the volunteers will be assisting the residents um, with the paperwork needed to get on to Medicare, Mass Health, do the paperwork for the recertification, understand what they're eligible for. Um, and, and help in that in that manner. Is that in all languages that people can get help? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. do that in yeah. yeah. Yes. Trisha. Yeah, they'll post hours when they'll come and, and uh, you know, there'll be sufficient notifications made. It's very good because you, you want to check your insurance periodically. Um, it, it'll be the easiest here because Cody's going to be um, yeah. directing right. it. Right. Yeah. So uh, we have a motion to accept. Yes. I make a motion to approve the interview with Shine program for Medicaid subject to, to the Jack. Do we have moved by next second by Fiorella? Yes. Uh, Gar? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Fiorella and Brian's a yes. Moving on to number seven. Mm -hmm. This is an RFP. Um, being a quasi state agency, we just can't go pick and buy. We've got to come up with an RFP. We've, we're, uh, have, we have funds, $300,000 EMR so far for the purchase of a, a condo unit. Um, and we now want to go out to bid to try and find one. So that's these documents here that were in your folder. It's all legal jargon and process. And we have to, as a board, approve the process to do the process, then accept the bids. So uh, any questions on that? Well, it will be a housing authority entity, yes. Absolutely. Yep. And we'll be working with the town of Arlington to make it deed restrict deed restricted as well. Yep. 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 Can we have a motion for that one? Yeah, I would move to approve the request for proposal for the purchase of a condo. Uh, second by? Is that Fiorella? Fiorella. So, so it's second by Fiorella. All in favor, Guy? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Okay. Get Brian's a yes. Number eight, approval notice to proceed for action for the Boston development. 
We replaced the windows and installed the heat source pumps at Chestnut Manor. This was a huge feather inject um, hat uh, to find funding for this project. Um, we've talked about it a number of times and now we're, we're moving forward. So anything you want to add to that, Jeff? Um, nope, just uh, for, at Chestnut Manor, I mean, we were really happy to be able to do this, especially with um, you know some of the ongoing work that's been happening at Chestnut Manor related to the fire, um, being able to get um, action for Boston, um, development Inc. To, to come in and, and do this project is going to be a great benefit to the residents of Chestnut, but it's also going to help us in our capital budget because um, they're going to be funding in, in full uh, the window replacement for the Chestnut Manor uh, development, as well as um, adding air source heat pumps. In the total cost of this? Um, I think what they're indicating is, is it's under a million, but I... Yeah, seven hundred ninety-six thousand, yeah. and and that's 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 their price. If we were to go through the price, it would be um, quite a bit more because of prevailing wage and some of the other requirements that, as a state agency, we go through. So we um, we saved a considerable amount of so, funding. So just for the audience, how did you get this? So we we submitted a lien application in November of twenty twenty one. Um, and, and part of that is, is spearheaded into some of the different things we're going to talk about tonight. So we're, what it makes us eligible and what it helps them to consider us for is um, programs through our electric, which is for us is Eversource, and then through gas, which is National Grid. Um, so this project is through Eversource or Ever, you know, Eversource because it's electric. Um, if, you know, it's going to help on the electric efficiency side. Um, but, you know, we're continuing to push and work with these different partners to, to figure out what we're eligible for and, and you know, um, not to get ahead of ourselves, but there's potential that other projects could come here to Drake Village that are similar in scope. Very good, excellent. So do we have a motion to approve that? Did you take, what? Yes. I don't know that everybody can make a move with an air source heat pump. It's take advantage of the it's, it's um, energy savings, um, but the thing that the, I think the residents are gonna like the most is not only does it provide heating, um, it provides cooling. Um, so it's gonna provide um, the cooling aspect for all those residents as well in the summer months, uh, which will help infrastructure wise because you know putting AC units in windows, um, if not installed properly, could cause damage to the windows. So I think it's gonna reverberate and, and um, lead to some additional savings as well. So these are more commonly referred to as mini splits. These are the things you'll see in buildings. They're two feet or four feet, and they're just tucked up like that speaker there, and they're put in each room. So they more commonly, it's called a mini split. So do we have a motion to move forward with that? Second. Moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. All in favor? Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Great, now we move on to number nine, same thing, but at Winslow. Jack, do you wanna add anything? The only thing that will be missing from this project is the, is the window replacement. Um, as, as the board knows, we, we redid the windows at Winslow Towers last, not this past summer, but the summer prior. Um, so this will just be the air source heat pumps. Great, any questions on that? Motion, move to approve it. Second. Gar, second by Fiorella. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. Number, number 10. Uh, this is a notice to proceed for Action Inc. to install equipment and sealants to improve the water and energy efficiency at Monotomy Manor, Drake, Hauser, Cusack, Chestnut, and the Donnelly House. Jack, you want to mention a little bit about that one? So, so this, is, um, this is encompassing all of our national grid um, powered properties, some only uh, have gas heated water, while some have gas heated water and um, gas heat. Um, at Monotomy Manor, it's gonna be, it's gonna provide something that I think we've all been hoping for for the past over a year now, which is to provide some of the sealant and weatherization that is gonna help um, in the, in, over the course of the next winter. Um, it's also gonna provide, um, they're looking at adding some additional insulation, whether at the cottages and, and some of the other areas as well to improve the energy efficiency. Um, on the water side, they're looking at installing some aerators and some new shower heads um, that will help with that. And, um, and we'll be looking, 
you know, at, at additional components at, over time. But those are the ones that we're looking at right now. The total cost of the program is 920000 right? 925 I believe so. Yep. Uh, any questions on it? Do you have a question? That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the stone doors. I don't know if that's all of them or just hers. Either. Is that all? Is that all of all of the units or just yours? All of them. We're definitely gonna look at that. That makes sense. It's a so it's a storm door screen and glass, but no other glass to roll up, right? No. Or to put in. So there must have been one years ago. Well, let me let me circle back with the maintenance department, um, and, and we can look into that because there, you know, there could be reasons why that that that's the way it is, but we'll look into it nonetheless. Yeah. So that's a great suggestion. Yeah, Fred. No, at, at the end, at the end, let's bring it up. Yeah, yeah, at the end. So any other questions on number number um, 10, the Winslow? I move to approve number 10, it's too long to read. Uh, no, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Yeah, number 10, yeah, it is, you're right. We have a second. So we have moved by Gar, second by Fiorella. All in favor for number 10, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. Move on to number 11. So this is the certificate of final completion for the roof replacement project at CUSAC, which is now 100% complete. Yeah. Right, Jack? That's correct. And they want to get paid. Yes. What do you um, when it, I forget what the retainage is. It might be just 5%. Yeah. Coming um, it came in on budget. Yeah. I think it's sixteen eight. Is that it? Is this it? Sixteen thousand eight hundred time. Yeah, they 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 did well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we own six. It looks like sixteen eight. So so do we have a motion to pay them? Get that move. Uh, motion moved by Fiorella, second by Nick. All in favor, guy. Yes. Uh, Nick. Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Ryan's a yes. Move to number 12. This is uh, to approve uh, Jack submitting um, a request to the CPA uh, Community Preservation Act um, for the Monotony Manor Window Replacement Project. And we're asking for $500,000. $500, dollars And hopefully, and Joanne sits in that committee as a member of this board. So give them some beatings. Any questions on this? Yeah, no brain. So do we have a motion to approve it? Yeah, I move to approve uh, number 12. Submission <laughs> of community CPA Act. CPA preliminary application for Monotony Manor window replacement project. So you get the move by Ga, second by Fiorella. All in favor, Ga? Yes. Number 13. Okay. This is for 250000 and we also submit a request to the CPA committee for um, monies to fix the house of building roof replacement project here. Same thing, just for 250000 Any questions? It's this roof. This it's, roof yeah. it's this roof here. Yep. yep. I, I move to approve submission CPA preliminary application for housing building roof replacement project. I second. So, hold on. So it's moved by Gar, second by Joanne. Fred, question? Yeah, when you do the roof, did you give us notice about? times and noise factor. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. Really yep, absolutely. Yep, yep. yep. absolutely, yep. Fred. We understand this. there's going to be yep. a lot of project coming up here at uh, Drake yep. Village over the yep. next probably six months to a year. Uh, so there'll be a lot of communication, not only yep. 
with all the residents, but especially between us and the Tenants Association. Yep. yep. Sure. I, I believe they, they did them all at the same time. But if they, but I, I don't have that figure. Does it leak? Does your unit leak? Good. 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 Somebody said 12. So that's a good point now. Remember, as I said to you when we had our meeting a week ago, there's, there's a new, and I'm off, off the track a little bit, but there's a new process in place. We have our board meetings. The president speak at the board meetings and tell us what the tenant activities are and nothing to do with the facility because after this meeting, Jack and Chris and Rowley then meet with the presidents and their board if they want, but more specifically the presidents, and that's when they bring up any issue with the facility. So if there's any issue with the facility, yeah, okay, good. So if there's any issue with the facility, make sure you bring it to Fred's attention so it can be fixed directly. And that gives these guys the opportunity to walk the premise and see it. So just a sidebar there. Good, good. Oh, good so hear. do we have... Um, Move yeah, uh, okay, a vote. All in favor, Guy? Yes. And Nick? Yes. Joanne? Fiorella? Brian's yes. We move on to number 14. Acceptance of CBG, CDBG funding for the house roof replacement project in the amount of 250000 So uh, the community development block grant has awarded us $250,000 for the roof. So uh, the roof obviously costs more than two hundred fifty thousand. So, so do we have a motion to accept that? That's moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. Uh, all in favor? Nagar. Yes. Nick. Yes. Joanne. Fiorella. Yes. Brian's a yes. Number fifteen: a consideration of the First Amendment to the antenna lease agreement with AT and T for Winslow Towers. Um, Jack's reviewed it. John's reviewed it. Hi, John. Um, and um, I think we're ready to sign it. I believe it was um, $300 more a month. That's a great question. I think the existing was just over 3000 a month. Yeah, it's about 10%. Yeah. 10%, yeah. 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 Change in shown in pink, but I printed it in black and white, so I don't have it. I assume that's it, right? That's it, yeah. 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 So, it, and the reason this is back on the agenda is there was um, there was some additional language that AT and T wanted to wanted to well change. They wanted to be updated, um, and and John Greco recommended that it go back to the board due to the change, um, so that the board could review and um and and vote if they they wanted to make that vote due to the fact that they had made the vote la on in July, um, based off of some like, some other language. Yeah. So. There's still some uh, dispute, uh, I guess, or uncertainty on this. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, go yep. ahead. Go ahead, John. There's still some uncertainty on this. What we did is when we added the, um, the $300, we said it gets added to the base. Because remember, in this contract over many, many years, there's a cost of living effect factor. And that cost of living factor should be added to the base. So this $300 that they're commencing on a certain date should be added to the base. So every year that uh, you know, that cost of living adjustment that they give will be include that $300 will be included in it. Um, they evidently are having some concern about doing that, and they want that worded in a way that that's not a certainty. And I said, well, what do you well, tell me what the language is that you don't like about it? And we can maybe make the language more comfortable for you. And they said, well, we just don't like any changes at all. I said, well, bottom line is that's a $300 increase to the monthly rent. That $300 increase ought to be to the monthly rent. And over the next 5, 10, 20 years, whatever it is, the cost of living uh, figure ought to be adjusted onto that. So that's still some little dispute over that. And I said that uh, as far as we're concerned, that's that's reasonable. And if you tell me there's a particular reason why you want to change and what you're aiming to do with, with that language, let me know. And the answer I got back was, we don't like any changes in the language we did. I said, well, I don't understand that because all lawyers go back and forth with the changes they're all comfortable with. So I don't know exactly where they are now. I said, but the only thing I can say is that if that three hundred dollars is added to the rent, and that three hundred dollars should be also included in any cost of living factor that's added to the rent over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Thanks, Anthony. Anybody have any questions, John? 
Do we have a motion to approve that? I have a question. So John, yeah. John, yeah. So John looked at this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's, been, been, he's been negotiating it. Yeah. So he's approved it. He just wanted us to vote again. Oh, the, correct. The, la Sorry, the, language, the language that should be in there is that that $300 will be added to the base rent so that the uh, cost of living factor will be adjusted on that base rent plus the $300. 300, right. right, right. Yep. Yeah. I second. We have moved by Fiorella, second by Gar. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Nick? Yes. Twin? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. Uh, so there's no need to go into executive session. We put that on there in case we had to go in further to discuss the, uh, the antenna issues. Uh, now we have 17 approval of the, of the minutes that are in your packet, the minutes of July 21. We did not have a meeting in August. Do we have a motion or is there any questions about the minutes? We have a motion to approve them. Second. Second. So moved by Fiorella, second by Nick. All in favor, guy? Yes. Brian, uh, Nick? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's yes. Now we move into public participations, local tenant organizations. Fred, I'm going to have you go last only because then we'll open to the floor for the residents of Drake. So is. Um, on the Zoom or in person, Jen, from Anatomy? She's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. She's in person. <laughs> sorry about that. Anything you'd like to tell?
Excellent. Off and running. Very good. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. That's very good. Good to hear. Um, Mike's not here from Cusack. Anybody on from Cusack? No. No. Doreen from Winslow? Yes. I think there were... <clears throat> Hello. Good evening. Hey, Doreen. So this is the time that I mentioned when we were at your cookout, that if there's anything... Uh, you can tell us about the tenant activities and things that's going on down there? Sure. Um, right now, we're working on um, getting together a Hawaiian night. We're getting together a high tea uh, afternoon time. We're planning on a Halloween party to be catered by Diagostinos. Our game night this month was a success again. And we're still working on our holiday bazaar, which is going to be on December 3rd. From 12 to 4 p.m. It's a Saturday afternoon. That's awesome. So yeah, um, Doreen is, is the new president down there. Um, new as of September. September. Just yeah. starting, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's awesome. So you guys are off and running. COVID's over. So we're kind of back to normal, which is great, as we've talked about here. So anything else you want to add, Doreen? No, we're just trying our best to get the tenants out of their great. apartments. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You got to do it with food. Yeah. <laughs> so that's great. And um, Fred, now we go to Drake. Fred, our new, newly elected president, brought back from uh, two years of COVID. Um, go ahead, Fred. I got a lot of things. Yep. Bring up, so maybe can't notes. Um, first of all, is the uh, of when will that happen? Uh, a keyboard. keyboard yeah. And then when we left the meeting last week, uh, it was last week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I said to Kristen and to Scott that they need to, because they're the piano players, they need to figure out what model they want and contact Jack. So okay. so I left it. So you might want to follow up with the two of them. I thought Kristen said she just bought one for herself. And I think Scott said it was a good model. It was somewhat reasonably priced. Also, we set up a microphone and sound here that are going to do so everybody can hear you all the time. Please help us with that. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, okay. We're, we're going to work with Fiorello. Okay, Fiorello. He's, he's already on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Graciela. Yeah. Yeah, Graciela is going to get me. Graciela is going to get me the make and model um, for, for, the, for the, for the, yeah. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So we're on it. So let's. Yeah. Yep. We used to have machines in here that sell food and drink. And you're in the front now. And I don't mind them in the front, but there's something that could be done about the prices of the, the goods in there. Uh, it's a rip off. Um, I'm trying to the guy that comes here, you can raise it to $2. Um, there was a time, I don't know if we can still do it, but the people at Coca-Cola who sells the soda, they'll give a discount to the seniors and stuff here. I got it for 75 cents before I believe you can get it for like $1.25 as a discount. I just thought you can negotiate with them. The names of the people are on the machine. I did that myself before, but I'm wondering if you can do that more full than I would mm -hmm. just to maybe do it for some seniors and handicapped people here. They deserve to have a fair amount of stuff coming out of that machine and not get ripped off. Yeah, we'll look into it. We'll, we'll look into it, but that's Thank one. Of, but that's one of those things you can't promise. I know. But we'll look I into it. Because yeah. he I'm doesn't really charge up. rent for the machines or anything like yeah, that. I know. But but we'll look into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, a possibility of Wi-Fi for everyone here in the building. Possibly, maybe use some of the money you're using for the project. It's not a lot. You can also negotiate with Comcast. Or maybe the other company to get it in here. I know you did something good, Brian, uh, by bringing the computer upstairs. Yeah. But a, a lot of people really could use the Wi-Fi if you could. And a lot of people can't afford to get it from Comcast. So there's Wi-Fi here. Yeah, but not, a, not anywhere else, from what I know. The community room. I'm not even a computer person. Well, I community know. room in, in out front, I assume. Yeah, right? I'm not sure. I, mean, I know for a fact it's in this room. I, you know, just, just to speak to that quickly, there are some different programs out there and we're hoping at some point to take advantage, but it's just going to be a matter of 
you know, when those become available and, and working with them and on that. Let me know, I'll help. Okay. Uh, the other thing is the cottages were brought up briefly. Um, I don't live in the cottages, but when I go to visit people there, um, they're deteriorating the stairs and things like that. I, I would hope that you really help the people in the cottages. Uh, they, they suffer. Some of the people have trouble walking up the stairs because they're broken or something. And uh, it really needs to be attended to. That's my opinion. Okay, that's one of those things that you definitely need to bring up at your at your meeting so i mean these are and because this is an open forum this, I'm, is, this is fine today but but those are that's one of those things you bring up at your meeting and that's when the three of four of you are going to get up and you're going to go walk over and you're going to show them the stairs okay. mm -hmm. and you're going to say listen and we're going to these are the things that need fixing so they can see it right so those things can be fixed you know major things take major funding but but fixing stairs and less like that So that's that's another thing, Fred. Definitely. Yeah. That's when you walk them over and you say, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do the, uh, the project and stuff, I want you to also account for the whatever noise, whatever dirt might be blown. Because this happened yeah. before. Yeah. It was a big deal when they did the mowing uh, with the leaves. Remember, I know a lot of people were yeah. affected by that. Too so early in the morning. Do the leaves. I know you promised me, but I want to bring it up to the yeah. tenants. Is it took 34 hours to blow leaves around this year, and I'm not exaggerating this. I timed it all instead of about eight or ten hours to do the leaves. Yeah. You could not get all the leaves in, uh, in like doing it partitionally. You have to wait till they come down, and that's the logic of it. Yeah. Instead of trying to get them as they come down, and that created the noise factor. And also, when they do the mowing on these machines, the blades don't even touch the grass on many areas. And they're blowing dirt around. Mm. I had my caretaker upstairs with me by the window. This mm. was last year. And the dirt blew up right to where my window, window yeah. was. And my caretaker and I had to close the window. Now, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, can you please avoid using machines when you don't have to? Those hand blowers are just as good. It means maintenance might not do a little more manual labor. What's the difference? They're getting paid for that. Yeah. And it's not a big area in the front area at all. When you really look at it, it doesn't need a lot of noise because it just comes right in the windows and the dirt, yeah. and especially in the cottages. The dirt was blown in the windows. Uh, Cody was there with tenants outside and dirt was blown on them. He actually called your office. He doesn't like to get involved, but he did then. And that's an important thing. We've got to watch out for pollution, noise pollution and dirt pollution. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Sorry. So, but, but you discussed this with Rolly. And again, th these are things that you bring up when you made this meeting. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. That's why, listen, this is an open one for the Drake folks. So you, we're allowing you to say anything you want. You know what I mean? But, but go ahead. And just to remind houses that we're an independent organization. Um, I like the ideas you brought up at the meeting about bringing the police, uh, the, the firemen and everything. I'm all for that. Wait a minute. As speakers. As speakers. As speakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm very okay with that. Anything yeah. you do and anything like that, well, of course, we'll always need food and money, right. which I hope can be spread here. You know, yeah. that's important. Uh, let me see. I, I might not have much else. <laughs> I just, uh, I, we will have another meeting in October, probably the, the first of September. So you're going to do monthly meetings, right? We'll do monthly yeah. meetings now. Bring everybody here, and I'll take all the suggestions and yeah. I'll bring it to you guys, like I'm supposed to. Well, you, and no, you remember you're a separate organization. Yeah. So you can feel free to do what you want to do. I mean, what yeah. we ask at the board meetings is you just keep us informed of the activity that you're doing, just like Jen, so that we can help or or offer something. You know what I mean? So. And vice yeah. versa. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yep. No, that's very good. I guess that's it for now. All right. the rest I could take up you can rebut. So, any other Drake folks want to want to go ahead? Oh, I'm sorry, Grassy Ali, you had a hand raised there. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. I am going to start my report a chair of the working committee. I cannot read it because nobody listens. 
and Min. Just watch out, Min Raciel, Just Thank watch you. out for the cord here. Yeah, I'll press over here. Okay. Yeah. And over here are the, are the bylaws, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yeah. The bylaws yeah. amended in 2014. Yeah. And the DACD recommended the housing authority to print the bylaws for everyone. Yep. Because we don't have bylaws in this community. I invited the League of Women Voters to amend the bylaws in 2014, and they are amended. If the president wants to amend the bylaws, it's up to him. So we can, DHCD now has recommended bylaws, I believe. Yes. So okay. did you look online to see those? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Yes, absolutely. They recommended the bylaws. So the, are these them? We follow the bylaws forever they see in the election or the same by law. But according to the DHCD, we need to pass by law all over, 214 units by law. Okay. Because over here, there are 214, yeah. 310 residents. So why don't, all right, I'll give this to Jack. Yes. He'll review it. And I will pass this around. Yep, and now also, You've got 10, I think we the other time we were here, we've got 10 different languages here, right? Yeah. So we'll have to figure that out. We have, a, yeah, we have, we a, have over here the English as a second language. Yeah. We need volunteers. Well, we have a service that we would give that to and then they translate it and yeah. print it. So. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. what, what do you? What works? Oh, yeah, you, you're still running your ESL programs? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, put that up. Anybody else in Drake? Go ahead. I just want to mention or and also this is not handicap accessible out here. Mm -hmm. They don't change in the landscape thing. Right? That's right. That isn't, but it's something that we I mean, that we're aware they of. Just got a board. We want to do. That's all they have is a board. Yeah, we're going to work on it. And also, I have one other thing, but I don't know. But, um, could we could use a little bingo machine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, so can it be fixed? I don't know. We've had it fixed. You tried it? When we had it, we had it. So can you do a little research and tell us where to find one? Sure. And, and send the email in. And, uh, you? Yeah, send it to me. And, oh, Jack, send, yeah. send it to Jack, send it to Jack. And uh, after he's making the 214 copies, still get it now. <laughs> yes, no, seriously, because that's obviously an important machine. You guys use it every week. So, right. And that cranking thing, forget. Yeah. So this is a much better machine, but I have to use, I have, I'm the one to call for bingo. I have to sometimes use a stick. Yeah. To get the, we we'll work on it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think something like that will let display so you can see it and the number of a bunch of people who don't have a very loud voice. Oh, they don't see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't have, I mean, I have a loud voice, but. So do your research and pick the, pick the one you think is the best. Yep, go ahead. Glass, where the frame is, yeah. which is easy for anything to get underneath. That needs to be 
Just make them wear them desperately for all of okay, yeah, the an opening for mice or I mean, something you know, else. Just like here, here you just get a ram of cement. Uh, I think that that's something we hopefully we can do part of the project. But it, as far as making like that needs to be those fixed. doors actually on oh, the campus, yeah, yeah. 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 but if yeah, yeah. okay. so. so you're talking about the ledge once you go out, right? The lip, the lip. Underneath the ledge is the frame, okay, where the window is. After the it, it ends where the brick is. There's a hole about the this big yeah. that goes the whole length of the frame. We'll, we'll look at it after. I, I think I know what you're talking. About. We got an idea. And I'm also wondering, could we could have we can get animals in here or anything? That's yes. Small. I'm also wondering if it's possible. Uh, for someone or other people that take rides and stuff, we have drivers that will drive around this place just looking for this place, looking for 37 Great Road. Mm -hmm. I am wondering if we have it in our budget, I'm sure you do, to put the number 37 above Hauser on the front of this building. The building's marked, but it's only a small plaque. Maybe this big, nobody can really see it, yep. but if it was on the car, with 37, that's easy to see when a driver is coming to pick you up, whether it's dialysis, anything else, uh, daycare, whatever it is. Then they're not slowly looking around all of the different. Uh, that's easy. Yeah. 37. Easy fix. Easy fix. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Very I good suggestion. What a sight. So that's an easy fix. So Jack will take care of that. Yep. Uh, hi, I'm Russell Wango. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, Joel, just to, to explain that for a minute, I call for an early morning ride pickup, yeah. and the driver's GPS sends them over to this side yeah. of the building. Yes. So they don't, if you put in 37 um, Great Road, you know, the, the whatever they call it, the map plan yeah. or whatever, directs them over to that side. Yes. So, you know, here I am on front and the other side of the building is picking up, I have a way to pick me up. So that might they, they do influence that my too. people that are not familiar with it, you know, not be, uh, so the number on so do you think if we put a number on the door and number front would that suffice or do you need a separate little sign? Uh, I, I would think it would help. I mean, I don't. I, I've only experienced the problem once because I've only called for records. Yeah. But, but when I look at uh, you know the thing so is maybe if you let it the door, thirty-seven great. Right? All right, he's going to look into this, so we'll have it resolved very quickly. Okay, then I have one other quick question. Um, there was an item, and I didn't quite get it on your agenda, you know, that we referred to a condominium being purchased. Yeah, yeah, so what we have... What the benefit to the public housing tenants was or what the overall program was. Good point. Good point. We have a we have a, a bunch of condos that we also own that we put tenants in, and some of the condos have different purposes. We in the past we've had a a condo for domestic violence. That's that we would work with the police department if there's an if there's an issue, they call us and we place those male or female families or whatever into that secret condo, as we'll say. Uh, so we have some programs like that, and we have condos down um, on um, Decatur Street that are just part of our portfolio. So um, you could, you, whether if you're living in the cottages here uh, or you're living in the condo there, it's the same structure, same everything. Trying to, um, just trying to increase the affordability of housing. Yeah. Affordable housing. Yeah. 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 No, but we are looking at, and I, that's a good point. Uh, we also own the Donnelly House. Right which is the White House across from the Highland Fire Station. Beautiful house. We bought it years ago, and that's for the 689 program. That's for uh, mentally challenged and physically challenged folks. Because uh, once, once you, uh, my daughter teaches special ed and um, the coding, and, and you know, once these folks age out to age 22, 
they're out. The state kicks them out. They have no place to go. So the 689 program tries to place them. So we've got 13 residents there. So we're actually also looking right now, we've got a grant, a $2.1 million grant that we got years ago to either build or buy another facility for this program. And, and uh, Jack and I, we looked at a piece of property the other day. We've looked at a, some other properties to try and find another house that we can convert into this and, and hopefully put another 10, 10 challenged males, females in the house. So it's good that yeah, you brought Fred, that up. You know, I didn't yeah. Yeah. yeah, Fred? Yeah, I just want to let people know that uh, the house is being for staff here about food. It's over there. I was baking all yesterday. <laughs> so any other any other folks, any other questions or comments? All right. Well, glad you all showed up tonight. Stay for the refreshments and uh, feel free to chat with the board members while we're here. And, and remember, all these issues that you brought up today, maintenance type things, you got to get them in writing to Fred so he brings them up at the meetings, his their specific meetings, you know. Um, so, no, I said all the, we talked about a lot of maintenance type things or suggestions. You want to put those in writing in the suggestion box. Fred will get them and he'll put them, bring them up at the monthly meeting with the director and the head of maintenance and monetization. And those are the guys that'll walk the property. Yeah, we, I, let's talk with Jack about that. I, I don't, I think you should have a, you, uh, you should have a, Oh, yeah, we'll get them there. Yeah. Fred, they'll get a new lock. They'll get a new lock. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, wait a minute. We got a uh, motion to adjourn. Seconds. Get that. So, motion by Ga, second by Fiorella to adjourn. All in favor, Ga? Yes. Nick? Yes. Can we in? Fiorella? Brian's a yes. We're adjourned.